Hi everyone, it's Emily, and for today's video, I'll be sharing sort of the process I like to go through every year when it comes to reevaluating my video game collection. So on this channel, I've talked a lot about curated collecting and what that means for me. So for me, I like to see my video game collection as sort of like a library. So instead of books, they're all of games that either I've played before and really enjoyed that remain on my shelves, and also games that I get to get to but like to someday. So for the past year or so, I've shown a lot of games that I've added to this library of video games. And I think it's about time that I sort of go back and sort of reevaluate each game one by one and kind of show my process of what I like to do when it comes to keeping my collection curated. I think these sort of annual check-ins are a good thing. And I know there are plenty of collectors who swear to never sell off any games because of the rising prices we've seen in a lot of retro gaming. Um, especially in recent years. So not only do I see my video game collection as a library of sorts, but I also like to think of it as sort of an organic thing. So it's gonna change and evolve over time. So some game that I may have picked up maybe years so back, um, I might not feel the same way about it today and moving forward as I did back then when I bought it. So I'm gonna take you along on this annual check-in and I'm kind of explain my process when it comes to reevaluating my collection. So the first thing I like to do is to remove everything off the shelves and go through all my games one by one. I find this process helpful because it is a pain to put things back on the shelves. So if I hold up a game and I'm feeling a little bit iffy about it or something that I don't see myself putting back on the shelves, that's usually an indicator that I probably should let it go. I'm going to remove everything except the items behind me. So these are the franchises that I know I won't be removing from these shelves anytime soon because they are still my top here at franchises and with all the statues and everything, I don't really want to mess with how I have it set up at the moment. All right, so I have everything off the shelves and surrounding me. And the next step I would suggest doing is to kind of list off what your collecting priorities are. So this really helps in the next part where you go through each game individually and decide if it's a game you want to keep on the shelf or one you want to get rid of. And I think it's always good to check in and reevaluate your collecting methods or priorities um, just in general to make sure that you're really content with what you're collecting and how you're going about it. I kind of already alluded to this earlier, but I do want to keep games that I played and enjoyed as well as collect games that are in genres I prefer, such as JRPGs or visual novels, and would like to get to someday. There are also publishers that I really like to collect for, such as NIS. I, I try to collect all of their JRPGs or visual novel hybrids when I get a chance. And when it comes to double dipping, I do like to collect all of the Falcom games, um, both on the PlayStation and the Switch whenever possible. So I think all that um, summarizes the bulk of my collection, but I also like to collect for a few different genres to try them out, or if they're indie games or other titles that are highly regarded that I'd like to eventually get to if I haven't already. But I don't want that to take up more than maybe 25% of my collection. So the bulk of it is going to be JRPGs and visual novels. So now that I've reestablished what I'm looking for when it comes to forming my video game collection, I'm going to go through each game individually one by one um, by console. And I kind of like to go through the Maria Kondo approach where I hold up an individual game and I question whether or not um, this game still brings me joy. Um, but in this case, I'm going to hold up a game and kind of fit it into three different categories. So the first category are all the games that I want to keep and put right back on the shelf after filming this video. The second category are all the games that I hope to resell or trade or donate. So they're games that I no longer feel a need to keep in my collection. And then the last pile is my maybe pile. So these are games that I'm still kind of on the fence about whether to keep or to let go. So these are the games that I'm going to kind of put um, to the side for now and maybe come back a month or so later and decide whether or not these are games I still want to keep or ones I like to uh, get rid of. So this is a method that I found really helpful over the years, not just for my video game collection, but multiple collections and kind of reevaluate all the things that I've accumulated over the years to see if they're things that I still want to hold on to. All right, so I have a ton of games to get through and we're gonna go through them console by console. And my predictions are that most of the games I'm gonna be letting go are gonna be from my Switch collection and possibly some from my PS4 collection. I think the other games will be safe for now and I might try to let go a few collector's editions that I no longer feel a need to own. So start off easy, I just have two games for my PSP collection so far. And um, I have Game Hearts Birth by Sleep, which is a game that I do wanna keep because I feel like it is um, pretty 
pretty significant for the console. Um, Final Fantasy 3, I think, is going to go on the maybe pile. So I bought this right before the Pixel Remaster Physical Edition, and I do know that this does have a bit more content, and I do like the fact that this is a PSP game that uh, was sold in Japan, which is why you see um, the Japanese on the spine there. Um, but it does play in English. So I do find the novelty of finding those hidden English Asian releases kind of a cool thing to have in a collection. So I'm going to have this on the maybe pile, um, depending on, I guess, how I feel about Final Fantasy III when I get to it on the Pixel Remaster. And then next I'll get through my Vita collection. And I think um, without even looking at them, I'm probably going to keep most of these. First is Tales of Heart R. So this is JRPG that I want to play someday. So we'll be keeping that. Uh, Persona uh, 4 Golden is a game I also like to get through, hopefully sometime this year. And um, this is the only physical version you can get at the moment. And then we have Miramasa Rebirth. It's a vanilla title and I hear it's awesome. So I want to play that too. As well as Odin Sphere, which is one I picked up recently that I love to get to. And then Lost Dimension was one I played earlier this year and I really enjoyed, so I do want to keep it in my game library. Now we have Tearaway, which is I think a classic game for the system, so I do want to keep it. Um, and then when it comes to the visual novels, um, Steinscape is one I want to keep. Um, I watched the anime years ago, so I want to play through this one and I get uh, Steinscape Zero at some point. And then we have the Normandy games, um, so this is one I would like to keep as well as Zero Time Dilemma. Then I have the two Move Love games. Um, so those are both on the keep pile, as well as the two Psychedelica games. Um, I played through um, Black Butterfly and you get to Ash and Hawk sometime soon. And then for more Tommy games, um, we have um, Scarlet 7, which I'm gonna try. And Nor 9 actually recently came out on the Switch, um, as well as um, the fan disc got its own physical release for it's going to get its own physical release sometime soon. So I'm debating whether or not to keep this on the Vita or to get both games so that they match on the same system on the Switch. So I'm going to put Nor9 in my maybe pile. And lastly, we have Akiyoki. And so I still need to get to the second game, but um, this is the first game. Continuing with PS2, um, these are all my childhood games. So I kind of already went through these and decided which ones I wanted to keep. So I'll go through this quickly. So we have the first Jack and Daxter, which will be in the keep pile. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, Up Your Arsenal, um, the key pile, uh, Psychonauts. Um, I do have the PS4 version or the collector's edition uh, with Psychonauts 2 coming, but I still want to keep my childhood copy. Um, similar with Final Fantasy 12, I do have um, the Zodiac Age uh, remaster version on the Switch, but I do want to keep my original uh, childhood copy that I played through. I guess I could say the same thing about the two Kingdom Hearts games. Um, I do want to keep my original PS2 copies. Now, uh, Katamari and Damacy, I don't have the disc in this, so I might try to uh, finish this copy at some point, though. This has gone in multiple remasters that doesn't have that PS2 jank, so um, I might put that on the maybe style. Yeah, I'll put this on the maybe pile to see if I want to uh, complete it or um, just buy one of the remasters. Then we have probably my only sports game in my collection is SSX Tricky. And this is a game I want to keep because I have very fond memories of this, along with uh, Lego Star Wars 2 and um, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, again, um, great memories with this in my um, playing with my brother. And I have Lord of the Rings, um, The Fellowship of the Ring. That comes with a CD. Um, I might just keep this because I love Lord of the Rings. I don't remember this game being that great. I might try to get more Lord of the Rings PS2 games at some point. So it might be nice to just have a little side collection um, for that console. And then we have God of War. This is the greatest hits version. And I don't know if this is one of the greatest hits versions that um, has fixed bugs from the Black Label um, counterpart. So I think for now I'll be keeping this. Um, but if the Black Label is basically the same game, I might try to, I guess, upgrade um, that copy so that I have a uniform shelf. Um, same with the Devil May Cry 3. Um, this was never my childhood game. I think my brother picked this up later on, like in high school or something. Um, but it's one I might try. And then there's Destroy All Humans. I think this also got a remaster on the Switch and possibly PS4. But I hear those remasters are not that great. At least the Switch one's not. So I think I'll keep this one for now. And then lastly, we have one without a cover that I might need to 
complete, but I have Prince of Persia, and it looks like it's the greatest hits version. I really enjoyed this Prince of Persia game, so I might try to complete this copy or just pick up a new black label one. All right, so moving on to Nintendo, I have my DS collection, um, which is small, but I would say mighty. Um, so I think all these are probably gonna keep, let's see. Um, so I have Chrono Trigger, the Japanese version. Uh, I just picked this up for a steal, and it plays in English, so definitely be keeping that one. Along with Nostalgia, which is a JRPG, and I do like to, again, collect my JRPGs. Um, along with Magical Star Sign, another JRPG, and The World Ends With You. I do hear that the controls and I guess the quality of life features are just better in the DS version versus the Switch counterpart, so I do want to keep the DS version for this. Then we have Valkyrie Profile. I do want to get more Valkyrie games, um, so I'll be keeping this one, even though I do hear uh, this has kind of a huge difficulty curve, so that'll be interesting once I get a chance to play that. Then I have Final Fantasy Tactics A2, and I think the original Final Fantasy game is gonna get a remaster, but not this game. So um, this will remain in the collection for now. And then we have Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, um, and this is a favorite franchise, so I'll be keeping this. Um, along with the two Zelda games. Um, so these will be remaining in the collection. And then the last four games are all the Professor Layton games. And um, I purposely uh, went on my way to collect these for the past year. Um, and I've so far just played The Curious Village and um, I'm hoping to get to the other ones um, before the new one on the Switch comes out. So in summary, all the DS games will remain on the shelf. Now onto my 3DS games, which there might be some maybes in here. Um, I do, I think, have about is it 65 or 70 games in here. So we'll see uh, what happens. Um, I do have um, Grim Echoes. Um, this is one of my favorite 3DS games. So of course it's remaining along with um, The Fates, a special edition version and Awakening. Um, all will remain here. Uh, one of my iffy games is Fragrant Story. So I played this and it's not very long. And honestly, I kind of just bought it as a novelty as the last kind of uh, RPG that was on the, available in the system. But to be honest, I don't think it really needs to remain in my collection. Um, it's a cool novelty piece, but I might sell it um, just for the sake of space. And I'm not gonna revisit this, I think, ever. So I'll put this in the maybe pile and see how I feel about it in a month. Then we have Tales of the Abyss. If this ever gets like a full-on HD remaster, I might um, upgrade and get rid of the 3DS version. But for now, since we don't have that from Bandai Namco, um, it remains in the collection. The next we have um, One Piece Ultimate World Red. And I have been considering actually getting the Vita version instead of keeping the 3DS one. Uh, so for now it's gonna remain in the collection, but if I ever pick up a really cheap Vita version, I might just swap these out. And then we have this SRPG, Lord of Magna. And I think all these RPGs are gonna stay. Uh, like Seventh Code Dragon 3, Code FVD. And that will be remaining. Um, the Alliance Alive, I love this on the 3DS, and I do have the launch edition box um, here <laughs> separately. And I do have this actually on the Switch. So part of me is thinking I probably should let one of these go, but I really love this on the 3DS, and I haven't tried the HD remaster on the Switch yet. So this might be one of my few exceptions that I decide to keep um, both versions. So for now, I'll keep it. I'm along with... Uh, Legend of Legacy. It's another one I need to get to. And then, of course, I'll be keeping Radiant Historia. This is one of my favorite games on the 3DS. And then Stella Glow, um, which I'll be keeping. Conception 2 is another game that is also available on the Vita that I might trade. <laughs> um, instead of keeping it on the 3DS, I'll just keep the Vita copy. But for now, I'll just keep it on the 3DS. We have the two Persona Q games um, that I haven't tried yet. Um, so um, I do wanna get to these eventually. And we have SMT4, uh, which has been a really fun game. I need to finish it, um, but I did get pretty far in it. Um, along with Apocalypse, I like to try two. And then um, we have uh, Devil Survivor Overclocked. Um, I really enjoyed this game, so it'll remain in the library. And I also need to finish Double Survivor 2. Then I have the 3DS version of Soul Hackers. Um, so I'll be keeping all these Atlas titles along with uh, Strange Journey. 
And then the Etrian Odyssey games are ones that I also plan to keep. Um, so these first two are not available on any other systems, though that might change in the future. However, the um, first game as well as the second game on the 3DS are a little different from the original DS as well as the Switch remasters because um, these include the untold stories. So um, I'm planning to keep these and I want to get Nexus at some point, but it's a little expensive. All right, so continuing, um, we have Zelda Majora's Mask 3D, which I'll be keeping. It's a good game. And then we have Ocarina of Time, another classic I want to keep in the collection and I still need to finish this game someday. <laughs> Um, and uh, we have Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. Now I do have the Switch remaster, which is the version I played. Eventually I'd like to try this on the 3DS um, and just keep it for novelty purposes because Xenoblade is one of my favorite franchises. Then I have both of the Project Cross Zone games or Project X Zone games, um, which is has a lot of characters that I love. Like it has some Fire Emblem and Xenoblade uh, crossovers, along with other franchises I haven't tried yet um, from the Tales games and various Capcom and Sega games. So um, I would like to get to those at some point. Now, um, more of the Layton or Professor Layton games, the Miracle Mask, Azrin Legacy, and the um, collab with Phoenix Wright um, all remains in the collection. Now these are some of the monster collecting and battling games. So Monster Hunter Stories, the first one, it's keeping along with the first two Yokai watches. If I ever get the, um, the third version of the second game, um, the one that's a little bit more expensive, I might trade up, uh, but I highly doubt that's gonna happen because that game's ridiculously expensive. For Pokemon, I do have Moon and Ultra Moon, and I do know that they have slightly different endings, so part of me is kind of curious um, the differences between these two games, though I do hear um, for most people, if you haven't played Moon, just go right to Ultra Moon. So at some point I might let go of Moon, but for now I'll keep it. I have um, Alpha Sapphire, uh, which is a good game and I'm gonna keep along with X. Maybe someday I'll replay them. Um, and then we have uh, Castlevania, A Mirror of Fate. And I don't have many Castlevania games. Um, this is, I think the only one I own at the moment, uh, but the franchise does interest me. So I wanna try to maybe bulk up that collection at some point. And I have Kid Icarus Uprising, another game I would like to try. Um, Metroid, Samus Returns. Um, of what I played with this game, I enjoyed. I need to get back to it. And then Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Um, and uh, Super uh, Mario Brothers 2 and Super Mario 3D Land. So um, those are kind of all the Mario games I want to keep. Um, I might try to get some of the other Mario and Luigi games, but for now I'm happy just to have those three with uh, Yoshi's World World, and we have Kirby's Epic Yarn, and Planet Robobot, and uh, Triple Deluxe. So those are all kind of the Nintendo uh, platformer games that I do want to keep in my collection. Um, now for Tomodachi Life, I feel like there's rumors that this might get some sort of Switch remaster or remake. So if that's true, I might let go of the 3DS copy and get the Switch version. And we have Story of Seasons along with uh, Story of Seasons Trio Town. And I do want to get to the farm simulator games eventually, um, having only played the Rune Factory games in the past and a little bit of Stardew Valley, um, Rune Factory 4. So I do have the Switch copy of this, but I really loved this on the 3DS. So I do kind of want to keep it for nostalgic reasons. And then in Polko Croy, uh, Story of Seasons, Fairy Tale. Um, uh, it's more similar to Grin Factory in that um, there's some RPG elements along with the farming simulation. Um, Ever Oasis, I hear nothing but good things about this, so I'll be keeping that. And Fantasy Life, I'll be keeping this. I love this game and I'm looking forward to the sequel coming to the Switch. And we have Animal Crossing, New Leaf, and I am thinking of actually just getting the Nintendo Selects version with a Welcome Amiibo because that is the um, New Leaf version that is complete on the cart. Whereas this one um, does require an update for I think the Amiibo and maybe some other things. I haven't looked too closely. I may or may not uh, go to the effort to switch out my copies. And then we have One Piece Romance Dawn. I'm probably gonna try to get as many One Piece games as possible <laughs> um, because that is one of my favorite franchises. And then we have uh, Bravely Default, a game I wanna keep though. I'm still thinking of swapping out the covers so it's not the world edition, but I haven't gone around to that yet. Um, 
uh, the sequel, Brave the Second Layer. And then I have the Dragon Quest games, so I have seven and eight. And these are the definitive versions of these games, so I do want to keep them. And then we have Cute Hearts 3D uh, Dream Drop Distance. And I, I really enjoyed this game, and I do want to keep it on the system rather than just go for one of those all-in-one packs that they have on the ps4 and we have final fantasy explorers i do hear that the servers are still open for the online co-op so i do want to give those a try before those inevitably close um, and then we have a uh, theater rhythm final fantasy final curtain call this did get a new switch release um it's not an exact one-to-one -one order remaster but i do hear people did enjoy the stylus kind of gameplay on this version versus the switch um so I feel like there's maybe half the camp that did prefer this over the Switch and then the other half that prefer the Switch version. So I want to try this before trying the Switch version. And then lastly, we have uh, Zelda A Link Between Worlds, my favorite game on the system. So of course I'm keeping it. So yeah, I had a feeling there wouldn't be a lot of 3DS games that I would be letting go. And I have all these uh, boxes of the games I showed and I do want to keep them all, except again, I'm thinking of letting go Fragrant Story. All right, before we get into the more intimidating piles I have on the floor here, I do have some Game Boy games that I'll just share again. Um, none of these I'm gonna let go, um, like uh, Zelda, A Link to the Past, Pokemon Silver, uh, Zelda, Oracle of Ages, and then um, Mario 2, which I don't know why this one has a case and not the others. But um, I do have a ton of manuals from my childhood, uh, various games that I may or may not have just showed. So um, I think for now I'll be keeping them, but there's some things like, I don't see myself ever getting a copy of Spy Hunter. Um, I might uh, resell or um, give away or something. So yeah, another day I'll go through these. Before getting into those huge piles, I do have a handful of PS5 games. And if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I finally bought a PS5. So I'll probably share an unboxing of that at some point. Um, we'll see. I'll, I'll be able to juggle all that with the things I have planned, but I'll quickly go through these games. I'm not gonna let go of any of them because I haven't played them yet, but we have Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which is probably gonna be the first game I'll play after some of those um, uh, tutorial things. Like I think it's Astro something. A lot of people were recommending I play first on the PS5. Um, then we have One Piece Odyssey. That I definitely wanna play sometime this year. Scarlet Nexus, um, Ease 8. Um, you'll see I do have this on another console, um, but I do want to keep the PS5 version. And eventually also get Ease 9. And then we have uh, Stray, uh, Chris Tales, which I do hear mixed things about, but I do want to try it um, to see how it does play on the PS5. So I just love the art style for this. We have Immortals Phoenix Rising, um, so I do want to keep this on the PS5. And then lastly, uh, Valkyrie Elysium, which I just picked up and showed in my latest uh, pickups video. All right, so I think I'm gonna leave Switch for last because that is a sizable collection to go through. So I'll go through my PS4 games first. So I think most of these I will be keeping um, because a lot of these are JRPGs or just games that I have been interested. There are some double dipped games that I might let go. So I'll talk about those when they come up. Uh, first we have Tales of Listeria, another Tales of game I wanna try. Uh, Linky Zero, uh, visual novel hybrid. I want to give it a try as well. Um, we have Kingdom Hearts 3. I think whenever they release a PS5 remaster of all the Kingdom Hearts games, um, I might let this go <laughs> along with um, another game I have here somewhere. Um, Final Fantasy 15 Royal Edition, um, another game I want to give it a try. I do have the Final Fantasy 7 remake and I got this, um, the deluxe edition, the steel book and everything. Um, I think I might let this go. I know resale wise, it's not gonna be worth that much, but I do think I wanna get the PS5 upgrade and that way it matches with the new game that's also coming out on the shelf. We have Soccer Wars, another keep. And then we have this near game that I do own on the Switch. And I do hear that the PS4 version is not complete on the disc. So I think I'm going to uh, let the PS4 version go. So this will be in my cell pile and I'll keep the Switch version when it comes up. So the PS4 version does play at 60 frames per second, whereas the Switch version just plays at 30, but to be honest, that difference does not really matter to me. Um, and then we have some of the Cold Steel games. So this is four, 
three, two. I need to get the first one. Um, the um, blue case version or the standard case is only a um, Peggy or Pal release. So I need to import that at some point. As I mentioned during my kind of reevaluation rules, I do like to collect Falcom games, um, including uh, Trails from Zero, uh, Trails to Azure. Um, we'll see a lot of these pop up in my Switch collection. And I guess I'll be keeping all of them for now. We have Tokyo Xanadu EX version. Um, this is getting a Switch version in Japan. So I imagine this will also be localized. So we'll see. I'll probably, if it does, I'll pick that up on the Switch as well. And we have a game I can never pronounce correctly. So I won't <laughs> attempt it here. Um, but I recently picked this up and I um, plan to play this one first along with um, the Mask of Deception and the Mask of Truth games. And then I have World of Final Fantasy and I'm tempted to actually get rid of the PS4 version and just get this on the Switch because there is an Asian English version. This does come with a little art book, but I'm not a huge Final Fantasy fan. And this does look cute with little chibi characters. So I'm gonna put this on my maybe. All right, so some more games. Um, we have Code Vein here. Um, which I want to keep. For some of these, I have a feeling we'll see PS5 remasters or ports or whatever. And in that case, I might let go of the PS4 versions down the line and just go with the PS5 version. But that will depend on a lot of factors, like how complete the disc will be and um, I guess how soon I could get it deeply discounted. <laughs> so uh, for now, I'll be keeping all those games that I think will probably eventually get uh, PS5 upgrades. Um, we have Blue Reflection, which I just picked up and will be keeping. I do have AI The Somnium Files. This one I'm torn because I love this game and I own this on the Switch. And the Switch version does have some issues uh, with performance um, that I don't think has been patched out. So part of me kind of wants to keep this, but I really don't need this. And I ended up getting the PS4 version because it came with the collector's edition that was deeply discounted on Amazon Warehouse um, just to get the little Iba figure. So I'm gonna put this on my maybe for now uh, and see how I feel later. And then we have Attack on Titan 2, Final Battle, keeping that, along with Gravity Rush 2. And then we have Ratchet and Clank, um, the remastered PS4 version. So I'll be keeping this. And then the Mass Effect um, Legendary Edition, I'll be keeping that as well and the Bioshock collection, another in the keep pile, and God of War, the 2018 version, keeping that. And then I have some PlayStation hit games like Uncharted 4, um, that I guess I'll be keeping for now. Um, I have a feeling a lot of these, again, will get PS5 remasters or remakes or something. And so down the line, I might let go of those um, to get those elsewhere. And then I also have the PlayStation hits of Tales of um, Berseria, which, I wish I got the regular edition because the red cases really do stick out on the shelf. I'm gonna to have to do some more research to see if the disc is any different from the original version. And if it's not, I might try to uh, trade uh, for the regular copy of this. All right, and then the rest of these are Steelbook editions. So I have Persona 5 Royal Steelbook edition. Um, I do have this on the Switch, which I think for now I'm gonna be keeping both because I do wanna play the Switch version, but I do like the Steelbook, so. I'll keep in the steel book for now. Um, and then we have Shine Resonance Reframe, um, the steel case version. It's a nice cool steel tin. And Valkyria Chronicles Remastered. Um, again, another one I want to keep, along with uh, Dragon's Crown Pro. And then uh, for Yakuza Like a Dragon, I did get this because it did come with the steel book. But I'll be honest, it's not really my favorite steelbook. I think it's fine. It's just, I guess I'm not really a fan of yellow or gold. Um, so they do have this on the PS5 really cheap. So I might try to just sell this. And I did get this with the Best Buy um, steelbook. So I might try to just swap those out and get the PS5 version, but I don't know. And the rest of these steelbooks I'll be sharing, I don't have games in them, except I think maybe for one that I'll be keeping for now. Like Valkyrie Elysium, all of my Trails of Cold Steel games, um, one and two. Uh, those do contain the disc. Then we have three and four. I have Ease 8 and the two uh, Crossbell duology games. 
the One Piece Odyssey still book, the Final Fantasy VII remake uh, still book, and then lastly um, the Catherine still book, whichever way it's supposed to go, um, which again is one that contains the game inside. So all those I'll be keeping for now. Yeah, I think upon further thought, I think the Like a Dragon one will go in my sale pile. Um, that way I could just buy the PS5 version um, when it's deeply discounted like I think it is currently. So that's probably the best route for me to go. And then quickly, um, just to go through the PS4 collector's editions I own that aren't on the shelves behind me. As I mentioned, I have AI, the Sami Files, Nirvana Initiative. So I'll be keeping this for now. I love that statue it came with. Um, Catherine Full Body, keeping that as well. And then I forgot to mention this earlier, but this is the Ease 8 Akramasa Donna Collection Edition, which I'll be keeping as well. So before I forget, I do have two loose PS4 games that I acquired, um, including the Keen Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 Remix Remaster compilation. I think, again, I'm gonna wait for the PS5 eventual remaster collection or whatever Square Enix decides to do for these games. So yeah, I don't know if I could sell this easily, but uh, it's there. And then also um, the show 19, I'm not a big sports game person, so I don't really need to hold on to this at all. All right, so now Switch games, which there are a lot of them. I'll try to go through them quickly, but there are quite a few things I think I need to trim in here. Um, some easy ones like Xenoblade Chronicles 3, uh, Torna, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and uh, the Definitive Edition. Um, all games I'm going to be keeping because I love Xenoblade. Then we have um, this import of a Square Enix title that I do want to keep. I'm forgetting what it, this one's called in English, um, along with Trials of Mana. So most of the Square Enix games I do want to keep. And Chrono Cross. Final Fantasy 12, The Zodiac Age, Final Fantasy 10 and 10 2. I'm gonna put this on my maybe pile because I want to get the English um, Asian version, which has both of these games on the cart rather than just X on the cart and X2 as a digital download code. Retract that. This will go in my sale pile. I think I, for sure I'm gonna be upgrading these. And it's exciting that this is apparently gonna get a remaster. It's the current rumor. So um, that'll be nice uh, to have as well eventually. Then we have uh, the two Musou games, Fire Emblem Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors Three Houses. I would like to get to these eventually. And then a recent pickup was the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. Keeping that. And here's Ronamata, um, the Switch version. So I'll be keeping that. Then Neo, the world ends with you. Another for the keep pile. And we have Octopath Traveler and Octopath Traveler 2, so both I'll be keeping along with Triangle Strategy, which this just got an update with some extra content um, for those who didn't hear that notice, um, which I thought was pretty cool. I also realized that I forgot to <laughs> include Ease Memories of Zalceta here, and I do have the box set, and yeah, both of these will be remaining in the collection. Uh, but continuing with the Switch games, um, I have Bravely Default 2, which I plan to keep, as well as Dragon Quest XI, um, the Definitive Edition, and yeah, this is a great game, so keeping that one as well, along with Dragon Quest Builders 2 and Crystar. Going through my Koei Tecmo games, I have Atelier Sophie 2, so I plan to keep that, along with the Mysterious Trilogy and the Dusk Trilogy. It's just so convenient to have those all on one cart. Then Atelier Rise of 3, 2. And then the first one I'm going to put on my uh, probably self shelf because I did order the North American edition. So um, that should be coming with a pre order I made on Video Games Plus. Um, they're a Canadian website. So I'll be letting go of this copy and trade it in for the North American edition. And we have Telia uh, Lua keeping that as well. And then lastly, the uh, Blue Reflection Second Light game. So I might keep this on the Switch or I might try to get the PS4 version just so that, um, because I have the first game on the PS4, it's nice to have them on the same console. So I'll put that in, maybe. Then Valkyrie Chronicles 4, keeping that. Uh, Persona uh, 5 Strikers. I will be getting rid of this because I do not want this on the Switch. Um, the performance is really bad on the Switch and 
I do want to get the PS4 version eventually. But uh, Persona 5 Royal, I'll keep being on the Switch, as I mentioned earlier, along with Shin Megami Tensei 3 and 13 Sentinels to each his rim, and Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Sharp FE Encore, another good game, keeping, and Fire Emblem Engage. And going back to the NAS titles, we have Fallen Legion Reverence, I was keeping that. And I do have the Fallen Legion uh, Rise of Glory Peggy version. So eventually I might try to switch this out and try to find a North American copy just so that my shelves are a little bit more uniform. But for now, I'll be keeping this since the North American versions are a little more difficult to come by. And we have Labyrinth of Refrain, keeping. And Disgaea 5, complete, keeping. Um, this is another one that I got, the PAL version that I think I'll be holding on for now. I know they did a reprint of uh, the fourth Disgaea game um, for North America, so NAS might do that again. And if they do, I'll be swapping out my copies. Um, and the first Disgaea game on the Switch and the Click Effect 2 in that. Uh, the Lines Live on the Switch, HD Remaster, be keeping that. And God Wars, which um, is uh, currently in the process of being delisted on the eShop and on um, I think the other platforms that was on like um, the Vita. So uh, definitely something to look into if you guys don't own a copy of this. And then we have Langrisser 1 and 2, keeping. And then my Ease games, so Ease 9 and Ease 8. So be keeping those because I like to double dip on my Falcom games. And in a similar vein, we have Trail of Cold Steel 3 and 4 as well as uh, Trails from Zero and Trails to Azure on the Switch, which is the definitive way to play outside of PC. And then we have Ease Origins, um, the, I think this is the Best Buy variant. And then um, we have uh, Here's the Kingdom, of course I'll be keeping, I'm currently playing through that. And Breath of the Wild. Um, I think this is the most up-to-date cart version, so I'll be keeping this. Um, if there's ever a more updated cart version, or if I try to get the Japanese version that has the DLC on the cart, I might switch out my copies because as a collector, I do like to have the games without any downloads required um, just for the future. And then Skyward Sword upkeeping, as well as Link's Awakening, and Tyro Warriors, Age of Calamity. I still need to get the first one. Astral Chain, keeping is a great game. And then I do have uh, the first Bayonetta game, which I'm gonna get, but uh, we'll see um, how that one goes. Um, that's a little bit on my maybe how depends on if I like it or not. I'll keep it and get the other games. Now, Assassin's Creed, the Rebel Collection, I do not need on the Switch. So this will be going on my sale pile. I think I bought this at Best Buy when it was like 10 bucks. So um, it was really cheap and an unnecessary purchase that I didn't need to make. And if I ever feel inclined to try the Assassin's Creed games again, I played the original on the 360 back in the day. Um, I think it's better suited for a PlayStation or Xbox. All right, so we have Super Mario uh, Odyssey, keeping that. And then uh, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, I want to try to get the PS4 complete version. Um, so not the first initial release, but the second uh, release that's complete on the disc apparently. So this will go in my sale pile. And I'll be keeping Rayman Legends as well as uh, Mawari, the Long Night Collection. I'll be keeping that, again, another NAS title. And then Disco Elysium, Final Cut, I'll be keeping, as well as Tales of Vesperia, and Hack.GU, Last Recode, and um, both of these Nino Kuna games I'll be keeping, and the Cyber Sleuth uh, Double Pack. Now, uh, Monster Hunter Rise, I've been on the fence about. I tried this game, I couldn't really get into it, and I do hear kind of need to play this with others, especially starting out. I'm gonna put this on my maybe pile for now. See if I wanna attempt it again anytime soon. But uh, Monster Hunter Stories 2, I do wanna keep um, because I do like the monster uh, collecting and battling type games. And I'll be keeping Pokemon Legend Arceus. Still haven't finished it, um, got a little burned out. Um, and I'll be keeping Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I know that game gets a lot of flack, but I enjoyed it for what it was. As well as Pokemon Sword, um, the expansion version. Then I have Fairy Fencer F. I'll be keeping this. I don't know if I'll be getting the sequel though. I've heard mixed things about that. And more on the keep pile is a Dragon Star 
Vermeer, not a potion permit. And The Witcher 3 I'll be keeping. I do want to get the PS5 version eventually though, but it's one of my favorite games and I did play it first on the Switch, so I'll be keeping that um, just for memory's sake. Um, Skyrim, keeping this as well. Um, Immortals Phoenix Rising for the Switch, I'll be letting go because I do have this on the PS5 and I don't need two copies of this. Um, Okami HD I'll be keeping. Now Tai, the Tai's Man Tiger and Tai 2. This unfortunately does have a digital code. I don't think this came out fully on the disc on the PS4. I will need to research that again. So for now I'll be keeping this because I do like my 3D action platformers from the PS2 era. And then Oddworld collection I'll be keeping. I, I have some fond memories of the original Oddworld and I wanna try the newer games. And then um, I picked up Azure Striker Gunbolt 3 recently. So I do wanna keep this and I think I wanna get the double pack too at some point. So now Stardew Valley, I have the original Switch version, but Fangamer released a more complete version. So I think I'm gonna let this go and get the more complete version that uh, has the new features on the cart. So this will go in my sale pile. Um, Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town, I'll be keeping. Along with uh, Rune Factory 4 Special, I'll be keeping. I kind of kicking myself for not getting the archival version. Maybe if I could ever happen upon a copy of that, I might get that. And if it comes with a game, we'll be selling one of these off, but we'll see. And then Sukuna of Rice Bruin, the keeping. And um, the mercenary games I do want to keep. I actually let my brother borrow the latest one. Um, so that's why that's not here. But yeah, they're, they're strategy RPGs and rather simple. So I, I do want to keep them for the collection. And then Rigardine, um, the Asian English version I'll be keeping. I don't really need the limited run version, so I'm happy with that edition. Uh, Death and Request 1 and 2 I'll be keeping on the Switch. I don't know performance-wise how that compares to the PS4 version. I haven't heard too many bad things about it, so I'll just be keeping it because I do like my handheld games. Uh, Fate, Stello, the Umbral Star I'll be keeping. And then Mario plus Rabbids King of Battle I'll be keeping as well. A few more stacks. Uh, Hades I'll be keeping, it's one of my favorite games. Um, so I have two copies of Transistor. Um, I recently picked up the limited edition, so I'll be keeping this version and I think selling the Best Buy cover variant because I really don't need two versions of the same game. Um, and I, I can't double dip on all my favorites. Uh, it'll be too much, I think. Um, I do have both of the Ori versions that came in the collector's edition, so keeping these. Then Ender Lilies, I'll be keeping that along with Eastward. And I recently picked up Arafel and Rise of the Third Power Limited Run. So I'll be keeping it. I want to give it a try before I decide what to do with it. Along with Blossom Tales 2, I'll be keeping a Cat Quest 1 and 2. I'm excited for the new one coming out. And uh, Bug Fables, I'll be keeping. Let's see how that one goes. Spirit Fear, I love this game, so I'll be keeping that as well. Even though there are some performance issues on the Switch, but uh, I could get past that. Cowboy is one I'm a bit on the fence about. I hear really good things about it and I do want to give it a try, but it's not a, really a game I've been reaching for or thinking about. So I'm gonna put this on my maybe list. Um, it was one of those instances where I think I got it super cheaply on a buy two, get one free deal. So um, there are a couple of these that I'll talk about that we'll have to, I think, go in my uh, get rid of pile because even though I picked them for a good deal, I don't really need them in my collection at this point. Crosscode is a game I tried last year and I need to get back into it. Um, now that I have a pro controller uh, for the Switch, I think it'll run a little bit better than how I was going about it on handheld. Uh, the Cruel King and the Great Hero, I will keep that along with the Liar Princess and Blind Prince and both NAS America releases. Um, and eyelets I just picked up and we'll be keeping along with Hollow Knight. Now these Wonder Boy games, I'm a bit on the fence about. I think I still need to just give them a try, see how I like them. I have a feeling I'll like them, but the ones I haven't felt inclined to try out recently. So I'll put this in my maybe pile. Along with Wonder Boy, The Dragon Trap. I do hear this is a fun game. I just, I was not, part of this era. So I don't know 
um, this sort of game will appeal to me and the mechanics. But yeah, I'll put that in my baby pile. And then another limited run game I just picked up was Anno uh, Mutation. So this is one I want to give a try and I hear really good things about it. And then we have uh, Coat of Princess EX. I think I'm going to put this on my baby pile. I picked this up during the uh, Video Games Plus reprint sale. Um, uh, they reissued the special 15th anniversary version of this. And uh, I've been looking up footage of this and I don't know if it's really a game for me. So I might give, give it away. I don't know. I'll have it on my maybe pile and reevaluate later. And then Remy Lore, it looks fun. I like cute uh, kind of anime girl action RPG sort of things. So I'll give that a try eventually. And then A Short Hike is a game I love, so I'm keeping that. Um, I have Heaven's Vault here, I'll be keeping as well. Untitled Goose Game is a lot of fun, so I'll be keeping that. Then I have all these Shanti games that I will be keeping. Sort of um, Metrovania platformer games. And then Card Shark, another one I'll be keeping. And Bree or Gris, keeping as well. Um, along with uh, Mammoth Garden, I'll be keeping. Cave Story um, Plus is another game I'm kind of on the fence about, so I'm gonna put this in my maybe pile. And then Other Side, I'll be keeping. Along with War Group, I'll be keeping. Be nice to not have the Pecky version, but it's the one I have. Um, I might try to swap them out eventually, but it's not a high priority. All right, so the last few um, games that are not special releases or special editions are official novels. So I'll go through these quickly. Um, Your Kill, I really enjoy this game, so keeping that. Um, this is a uh, boys' love uh, visual novel that I need to try. And we have Color Malice that I really like, as well as the fan disc. I still need to get to. Before I feed the memories, I liked half this game. Uh, so I'll, I'll just keep it for the memories of the half I did enjoy. Um, another Otome game that I need to try um, is this one, along with uh, Cafe Chante and Olympia Sore. And we have Variable Barricade, Cupid Parasite. Um, and uh, this one I just picked up and or imported from Japan. Um, it's a little bit more mature than the previous ones I just showed. And we also have Best of Fellows, which I think is getting the sequel later this year or sometime soon, if it hasn't already. Then we have Witch on the Holy Night. Um, this is a beautiful game, so I'll be keeping that. Uh, so Kota Dharma is an interesting game, a lot of fan service um, with some puzzle elements. I'll admit I bought this so that I could get free shipping during one of the Dubians Plus uh, sales. So I'm gonna put this on the maybe pile. I don't know if I'll ever get to it. And a fan service doesn't usually bother me. I, I usually find it kind of funny, but uh, maybe someday I'll put it in and see how it goes. Uh, Root film, that's one I'll be keeping along with Root Letter. Uh, if my heart had wings, I'll be keeping. Along um, with Clanad. And then Little Busters, I'll be keeping. Along um, with Seabed. We have Maglem Lord, which I think is fun. I need to give it a try. Um, and we have Fatal 12, keeping as well. And Doki Doki uh, Literature Club. And we have the first Ace Attorney uh, trilogy collection. Um, it's really exciting that Capcom just announced. Uh, the second collection with games four through six and then uh, the house in Vita Morgana. I really need to get to that one. I hear nothing but praise for that game. And then Valhalla, um, keeping as well and to the moon and the great uh, Ace Attorney Chronicles keeping. It's really hard for me to part with games from my favorite genre if I haven't played them yet. And then Donna Rampa keeping and uh, uh, both the first AI, The Somnium Files, as well as its sequel. So I love both of those. I'll be keeping them. And then the Opius Collection, I just recently picked up. And Digimon Survive, I'll be keeping. All right, so I mostly just have collector editions left, along with a few other awesome ends, uh, such as uh, Cathedral, the premium games edition I'll be keeping. And I also have Phenotopia Awakening, which I'll be keeping as well. Um, I just picked up the Oceanhorn um, little box set from Limit Run 
um, which is a Zelda-like game. So be keeping that for now. And then I have two special reserve games, uh, little uh, deluxe box sets, including uh, Death's Door, which the Google Mine keeps coming undone. I might have to re-glue that. <laughs> and then um, Gato Roboto. And so both of those I plan on keeping. Now for collector's editions, um, I have Rune Factory 5. I didn't get super far in Rune Factory 5 because I was waiting for a patch that never came. <laughs> Um, but from what I played, I did enjoy it. Uh, I just need to get back into it. And I did end up buying or pre-ordering the, the third uh, game. That's getting this uh, special box treatment, uh, which on the Holy Night, I just talked about how I, much I enjoyed this game. So I'll be keeping this and um, this little collector's edition box is really nice. Another game I talked about that I enjoyed was Transistor. Um, so I'll be keeping this box along with the Ori I Am A Bit collection box. Um, it's really pretty with stained glass sort of art thing which was really nice and more favorite games that i have collector's editions boxes that i plan on keeping is atelier lua is which collector's box before they went with the koei tecmo premium edition boxes that are a little less nice uh, but i'll still regardless be keeping the rise of three one and then i have the ease nine um Mockstrom and ox collector's edition that i'll be keeping along with Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. Nice little collector's box. And now the remaining ones are ones I'm kind of on the fence about, uh, such as the Valkyria Chronicles 4 uh, limited edition. This comes with like a, a tank statue, as well as the art book that looks like a journal. And this thing's massive. I have it right now at the top of my uh, shelves. But I don't know if I really need this. I, I like the game and want to keep the game, of course, but I don't know if I need all this. NAS is a publisher that has been doing this I think far too often, releasing special editions as uh, I guess their launch edition. And they did this with the Cruel um, King and the Great Hero and um, they're not as nice as their collector's edition ones like they released for the Trails games up there um, along with their other games that are exclusive to their website store. Um, this one just comes with a little um, art book um, along with this plush and I don't really need it. So I might get rid of this. So I'll put this in my maybe pile because it's just, again, bulk that I really don't need on my shelves. And in the similar vein, I have Void uh, Terrarium here, the limited edition, which I guess was the standard edition when it came out. I got this deeply discounted on Best Buy and it's a game that interests me. And I usually do like NAS published titles. And this came with, a, or the sequel just came out recently or earlier this year as well. Um, and it's an interesting game. I just don't, again, need all this bulk. Uh, there's been a lot of NAS titles I've been avoiding because I don't really want the extra cardboard they come with. So I might try to just sell this and pick up the game case by itself or uh, just take out the game case and see if anyone's interested in the collector's items. So I'll put this on my maybe pile. And then we have Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom, which as you see is still sealed. So I'm still all on the fence about this game. I picked it up because I knew that the standard release was really difficult to get. And it was a game that interested me and I heard really good things about it, but I really don't need the collector's edition. So I might try to sell this and just pick up the standard release or from my understanding, this is actually the more complete game on the cart. So I might kind of gut it <laughs> and see if people are interested in like the map or whatever it comes with. But yeah, I'll put this on my maybe pile. And last but not least are the steel cases. So I have the Monster Hunter Rise one, which I don't think I need. So I'm gonna probably put this in my steel pile, even if I do end up keeping the game. Then we have the Persona 5 Strikers steel book, which I don't think I really need. I'll put this in my maybe because if I end up really enjoying Persona 5 Royal whenever I get to it, I probably regret selling that. Um, and then, oh, this is the Shimigami Tensei five steelbook version um with the game in it i kind of wish i got the standard case because i just feel like some of the steelbooks are a little clunky especially if that's the only way um restoring the game but yeah i'll keep this for now uh, the room factory 4 steelbook i'll be keeping along with the octopath traveler 2 steelbook and the zelda tears the kingdom steelbook i'll be keeping along with uh, fire emblem three houses this is another case where i don't have the standard case so I might try to get that eventually. And then uh, Fire Emblem Engage, keeping in my Xenoblade Chronicles 2 steelbook, along with 
Cinema Chronicles 3 still book I'll be keeping. Uh, and then there we have it. So I think this was a really good process for me to, again, kind of look at all of the games that I have in my collection and kind of reevaluate uh, the things that I've picked up over the past few years and kind of see if some of these things should remain in the collection or not. And I think it also kind of helps me moving forward um, with what things I want to prioritize when it comes to filling in the gaps in my collection. I know this process could be a lot and not for everyone. And there's always this fear in the back of our minds that if we sell a game that we owned at some point, we might regret it. And that certainly can be the case. Um, but I think sometimes when you sell a game and then regret it, that just kind of re uh, and states that this is a game that belongs in your collection. So even if you had to pay a slightly higher premium to get some of these games, sometimes it's worth just having that knowledge that this is a game that you really feel strongly to have in your collection. So I think when it comes to standard releases that are really easy to get a hold of, um, this is easier to do, but the more niche and harder to get a hold of games are definitely ones that are harder to let go, understandably. But I have all these games in my key pile that need to go back onto these shelves and I'm going to put my uh, selling stuff in my box where I have a bunch of other things I'm selling uh, to eventually list somewhere or see if I can get trade and credit at some store. Not that I have any nearby, but you never know. Um, and all the maybe pile games I'm going to just kind of put off to the side for now and revisit maybe a month from now to see how I feel about them and whether or not I want to keep them or to also add them to my sale pile. But I hope all this process was interesting for you guys and um, maybe helped you consider what you want to do with your collection and whether or not to do a process like this or something similar. If you also have a process you'd like to go through when reevaluating your collection, I'd love to hear sort of your thought process if it's something similar to this or a little bit different. And until my next video, bye guys.